ever heard Hong Kong police using using tear gas. Sit together and wait for the crackdown. Many people in Hong Kong and the SAR government and the central government we've always believed that Hong Kong people don't want their you know, uh, uh, normal life to be disrupted at least not for long and then help produce everything went out of control. It is basically uh, an explosion of the anger of the people from the past 30 years. They believe that they were fighting for democracy, for what they call genuine universal suffrage in 2017 for electing chief executive. So 200,000 of people like, uh, committing civil disobedience, we did not expect about this. Basically, the teenagers cannot see the hopes of their future, so they have the, all the angers in their hearts, and then they, very, they are very eager to reform the society to, the, to a better place for them. After the tear gas, I come here every day. I come a variety after school at 4 30 something. Yeah. Then I come here first, I would do my homework at the study corner. Then, I, or maybe sometimes I would teach people how to throw the small yellow umbrella. Then I would wait for my friends come after their work. Then we we start to build a huge umbrella together. My mom is support this movement and supporting students, but my dad not support with this, and he thinks that this movement is illegal, and he thought that democracy is not that important for Hong Kong. Yo 我觉得这个没什么不对的，他又有这个想法，他就觉得现在生活的挺好了，还搞这么多事干嘛？为什么要去搞战争？他也提个这个问题，搞来搞去都搞不好，就就始终就是说中央这个问题已改变不了了。uh, my father should call me just like that. Uh, where are you now? Uh, when did you, when will you come home? Then I just answer him. I'm doing project at school. I'm I'm so busy. I can't went home early. I still love my dad, even we have different opinions. Um, sometimes I still try to tell him the things I saw. Many families actually are very much divided on this issue. If we look elsewhere or look, look back in history, very often um, the younger generation would tend to be more um, receptive to revolutionary ideas. It means that uh, when, when you observe something, it is unjust. When you keep silence, it is not a good manner or good thing to do, but you should like say it out loud. There is a very sizable part of the population 
were very much against it, especially um, those people who have been uh, most badly affected by the Occupy movement. <laughs> 你可以看到蒙古人，特别是在香港，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气质，他们的气
you can see they join all the small wood pieces together to build a one big giant here and holding a yellow umbrella. It uh, represents our spirit here. As long as it is there, we are always here. I really love it. Sometimes when I got nothing to do, I just spend my time here looking at it. Like he's one of my best friend here, but he just he doesn't respond to me. Although it is uh, not made by a specific like artist, but um, it is made by uh, all Hong Kong people. You can see different kind of memo and artwork stick on the wall. And you can see that uh, there's a lot of people supporting this protest, even outside of Hong Kong. It is made from the umbrella from the 28th of September. I think it's a bunch of um, design students or design clothing students and they saw all the umbrella together and makes uh, this wonderful artwork hanging over there. I originally planned to um, go into European countries for working holiday or just traveling and I took a gap year because of this. Just sacrificed a lot that I don't have my time to spend with my friends and my family. I just postpone everything and actually I'm pretty confused now. I'm still deciding when should I leave or when, what should I do. If I got arrested, will it affect my future or will it affect my, uh, my family background or anything. So I, I'm not sure when will I leave. Hong Kong is a place that people keep describing it a uh, cultural desert because there's no room for people developing arts in here because it is a, like financial city. Among all the developed uh, capitalist economies in the world, we have here in Hong Kong one of the most conservative, most rightist government. Very low taxes and very low public spending, including welfare. I don't think it is purely by chance that the absence of an elected government in Hong Kong coincides with the absence of a high level of welfare spending. More than a billion people in Hong Kong living under the poverty line. The political system is uh, heavily favored some of the interest group. The, the, the property industry and then uh, some of the very famous uh, businessmen. The poor people in Hong Kong are not receiving uh, a just and, uh, and the right uh, social system from it. Uh, that, that's the reason why I, I came out, because I want less people in this society uh, suffering. <laughs> We try to uh, protect the citizen and the student from the uh, police and uh, for China people and uh, child and some drug dealers, we will handle those people. When things happen, we run, run over there and then try to know what happened. The, the man is hitting our, uh, our girl. We surround him and uh, don't let him go peacefully. And then we call the police and uh, when the police come, they will handle the whole thing. The principle is uh, non-violence and peacefully. And uh, we never cross the line and uh, we, we never will. We think if we do the protest peacefully and the people will respect us. I think sometimes being gentle may be more powerful than using violence. Every day have uh, people come here to mess around. It's a lot of challenge, but uh, we learn from uh, every day and we will fight for uh, uh, to the end. I went to America when I was 19, uh, living there 13 years. I come back in 97 and be a lifeguard. I have two kids. My family is worried, but they think this is the right thing to do. I fight for our future for my, you know, my children, so they will support me.
，因為佢寫出嚟好忙。咁我覺得就有少少傷心咯，即係佢冇咁多時間陪我。咁我咁我咁我做呢啲嘢都，我覺得都係覺得佢都係為人，係都不過係好嘅市民咯。Maybe will not change my life, but but will change the next generation of life. I think. Even Xi Jinping himself had to sternly denounce this movement as. Unlawful. Consider the situation in China. If they let people elsewhere get this impression that okay, let us rally enough people, let us get enough people in the streets, then we can ask the government whatever we want, and they'll have to give us. Right? They cannot allow this. It is a basic right of human being. And once, if you have room and have time to understand what true democracy is, you should fight for it. Freedom is precious. It's, it's not free, and we have to pay. I'm glad I'm part of uh, people who are willing to sacrifice uh, to pay for it. To me, China means uh, 1989, means where people you know, sacrifice their life uh, for a better uh, for ideal, and uh, that memory, that history, is kept here in Hong Kong, and uh, it's it's living here now. I talked to a few students leaders; uh, they know the history very well, and uh, for them, that's uh, inspiration, being peaceful all the time, and uh, uh, you know that's where I see the similarity here. This generation uh, grow up. Uh, from the uh, uh, memories of uh, Tiananmen protesters. So uh, they are very familiar with the image, the ideal, uh, the experience. Uh, in 1989, the tents on Tiananmen Square, they were all donated by Hong Kong people. That's why I feel like I must stay here and in the tent. I regret that uh, I uh, had not uh, done enough as a student to succeed in what we want. Actually, first thing I did when I arrived, I apologize for not finishing the work 25 years ago. So now your younger generation have to carry on and uh, finish it. Uh, maybe in you know, 10, 20 years, the same thing will happen in China. In the past 30 something years, Hong Kong people are looking for genuine democracy, but after all the possible ways which is which are legal like the government still do not respond about our demands this whole thing has become a zero-sum game what does it mean for the protesters for the young students who have taken part of course they won't see any reason for leaving the protest they won't see any reason for going home without getting something concrete, which they can brandish and say, look, we have achieved our purpose. It is a triumphant march home, right? They need something. I never thought I'll get in involved with the Occupy movement. It was the tear gassing and the police brutality that really propelled me to stay and to get involved. Um, I set up a tent. People, I guess they saw what happened on TV and just start donating supplies. We do a lot of general maintenance work as well. Cleaning, restocking. We also lease out tents to visitors, but obviously we don't charge them any money. I didn't even tell the office, I just stayed for the first night. And then afterwards I said, I, I don't think I'm coming back. I can't, I can't really concentrate at work because my heart is here. Um, so I can't function anymore. People here are getting too comfortable with their tents and furniture and so on. That's fine, you know, we've, we've been here for a long time, but we need to take action. Maybe we encourage more active participation. Maybe we escalate our movement somehow. Well, escalation doesn't mean sort of using violence at all, it just means we're doing something that, that's different. 
we could collectively not pay tax, we could occupy Cross Harbour Tunnel, uh, we could occupy the airport. Anything that we could elicit a immediate, an immediate response from the government. As long as that there are students here, I'll stay because a lot of them are very young. And in situations like this, when, when, when they're so young, they need guidance, they need leadership. The, the, the thought of me staying here for a year really scares me. Right now, I'm prepared for another month, if needed. If not, you know, I'm happy for this to end in a good way. We have to come to terms with the, with the fact, with the reality, the political reality, that Beijing has the final say on who can and who cannot be the chief executive, because the chief executive is supposed to represent the central government to govern Hong Kong. I mean, you, you simply cannot say no. Beijing, keep your hands off. We tell you who the chief executive will be, and you must accept the person we choose. I mean, this is not one country, two systems. The quote from the uh, it's the name of the song, the international. This is the final struggle, right? To many people. This is the final showdown. Is there any long-term consequences? We don't know, but we are ready for, for them to charge us and then to have the legal responsibility of what we have done.